This time I would like for us to take our Bibles and I'm going to be reading from the book of James as uh, we look forward to uh, a new year, uh, as we've already begun a new year and looking forward to uh, the days that uh, the Lord shall give us uh, that uh, we need to uh, focus upon what it is that the Lord uh, would have us uh, to set our minds to do. And we see here in the book of James, uh, it is that we are to be doers of the word of God. Uh, we are abundantly blessed that uh, we have uh, the freedoms to uh, proclaim the word of God. We can sit under the gospel ministry, but it's so much more important for us to be doers of the word, that word that we hear. So let us uh, follow as I read James 1, beginning in verse 19 through verse uh, 27, the end of the chapter. <clears throat> James says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. During the course of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, we find that the chief adversaries of our Lord's ministry were those uh, religious elitists, the Pharisees uh, and the scribes. In fact, uh, some have been thought to say that if uh, there were just two that would make it to heaven, one would be a Pharisee and another a scribe. But uh, as we uh, look at the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we see that uh, rather uh, than be supportive of the ministry of our Savior, uh, they were very adversarial. In Matthew 23, beginning in verse 2, the scripture says the scribes and the Pharisees uh, sit in Moses' seat. And our Lord says, All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not you after their works. For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and they lay on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms of feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, 
and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. The scribes were the chief interpreters of the law. The Pharisees were those uh, who prided uh, themselves in their uh, strict uh, external keeping of that law. But here, our Lord Jesus Christ said, do as they tell you, because they were proclaiming it from the word of God, but don't do as they do, because they don't follow through with what they teach. They were teachers of the law. They were not doers of it. And so the lesson that we need to learn here uh, this evening from uh, the warning of our Lord Jesus Christ, we find in verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We find also in the Old Testament as I read from the book of Ezekiel, the uh, prophet Ezekiel uh, mentions as well in his time that the people were hearers of the word, but they would not uh, obey. They come unto the, the scripture says, Ezekiel 33, 31, and 32, as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do them not. So, I would have us to consider, first of all, the first couple of verses here before us, verses 19 and 20, that if we would be a doer of the word, Certainly, it's only by the grace of God. A person can only be a doer of the word uh, if their heart has been wrought upon by the Holy Spirit. If they've truly been born again. James mentions in verses 19 and 20 that if uh, we would be a doer of the word, we must be Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Swift to hear. That is, swift to hear what God's word is saying. You know, we can go now with the internet all over the world. and We can hear all kinds of messages and all kinds of messengers. But we are to listen to one message as Christians, and that is the message that we hear from God's word. As it says in the book of Isaiah, according uh, to the word and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, receive them not. And so, what are we to hear? To be a doer. We have to hear it so that we'll know how to obey it. And we must be quick to hear. Sometimes we get these things turned around. Rather than being quick to hear, we're slow to hear and, and swift to speak. But James says, be swift to hear. And slow to speak and slow to wrath. There's three things here. Verses 19 and uh, 20 I'd have us to note. To be a doer of the word. Swift to hear. We've got to put our ears under the hearing of the word of God. And we must be uh, slow to speak. That is, we have learning to do. 
We're so quick to offer up our opinions or what we think without really having studied out matters in the scriptures. I like what is uh, said by another regarding how we need to be swift to hear and slow to speak. He said, God has given us two ears, but only one tongue. The ears are exposed, but the tongue is walled in behind the teeth. It's a way of telling us we ought to be very restrained with how this tongue is used. In fact, later on in this passage of Scripture, James says that we are to bridle the tongue. The tongue's like a wild horse. It wants to run loose and, and do what it wants to do. But we need to first be trained from the hearing of the word. And then when we get to where we understand, then we can speak it to others. But notice it says, slow to wrath. You know, oftentimes when we uh, get in discussions with people and we may disagree with them, uh, right away we feel like we're bristling up and we're feeling ourselves getting uh, upset and angry. The scripture says that we are to speak the truth in love. Even uh, to those of our adversaries, we speak the truth, but we, we speak it in love. The Word of God is God's Word of, of His loving Word to us. All of the Ten Commandments are fulfilled in one word, that we should love one another. There is no room for anger and wrath. Wrath and anger works unrighteousness and Love works that which is righteous, that which is according to God's word. So let us be very cautious with our speech if we would be a doer of the word. I believe it was uh, Thomas Watson who said that um, we can... Uh, die and go to hell just as much for tongues sin, tongue sins as we can for breaking any of the Ten Commandments. And so, uh, Ecclesiastes 5, 2, it says, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Why, why should we let our words be few? Because uh, there is another proverb that says, there lacketh not sin in much speech. We talk long enough, we're going to sin with our tongue. And so if we control our speech, let our words be few, then we will probably note that we will be less likely to transgress with our tongue. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Oftentimes, we are prompted to just blurt out something that we ordinarily wouldn't say just because we were in the heat of, of anger. And uh, that's when we should clamp down our mouth and not speak. Um, we need to be careful that uh, we are not hasty, the scripture says, with our anger. And uh, we speak that, which we would later regret. Proverbs 16.32 says, He that is slow to anger is... Better than the mighty. I, uh, we should all admire uh, the grace that God gives 
uh, to some who are, are slow to anger. Because it says, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Now we would think of it being the other way around. We would think of you better to be mighty than to be uh, slow of anger. And he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh a city. Can you imagine a man single-handedly taking a city and yet uh, he is not able to rule his anger. Uh, he is a man that is, because he cannot control his anger, he is a man that is not a man of character. And so we need to be very uh, slow to anger. Remember this, that uh, anger works unrighteousness. But as our hearts are, are filled with love, we will work that which is righteous. We have to, in times, engage, uh, as we were mentioning earlier. We, may, we have to engage people with uh, what we believe. And we must not give vent to anger but always, as we said, speak the truth in love. So let us remember, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Then verse 21, uh, it says, uh, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. The implanted word, uh, that word is implanted in us by those, uh, in those who are believers. And the Holy Spirit engrafts or implants that word in us. And it is that engrafted word in us that helps guide us in the right way. I know all of us desire wisdom for the coming year. And we know that that wisdom is found in the scriptures. And so this coming year we should be much in the scriptures so that we may have our hearts uh, filled with the word of God, that engrafted word. It is that word that it says that saves our soul. Holy Spirit, by the word of God, the ministry of the preaching of the word of God, our souls are saved. It's a powerful word that we have, and it is engrafted into our souls. And so we must take heed to that word, and that word teaches us that we are to put aside filthiness, filthiness that is, uh, immorality, the immorality that we see all around us as Christians, uh, we have to, as Christians, not be partakers of those evil deeds and the superfluity or abundance of naughtiness, uh, corrupt conduct. We see it all around. But as Christians, we do not become a part of that because as God's people, we are to live holy and unblameable lives. And we can by God's grace. Peter speaks in 1 Peter 4, 3 of putting away filthy lusts. For the time past of your life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange. That is, the people of the world look at Christians and think it strange that we do not find the same delight and the same pleasure that they do, the same riot of excess. So the manner of our receiving of the word of God is to receive it with 
with meekness. Be doers of the word. And in verse 22, he says, Not hearers only deceiving yourselves, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, uh, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. No, the glass here is alluding to a mirror. And I'm sure that uh, sometime even today, we've probably looked in a mirror because we wanted to make sure that uh, we uh, <clears throat> were not, uh, would not become a spectacle by our appearance. There's nothing wrong with looking uh, in the glass. Uh, in fact, we should. But the, the thing that we need to note that is being made here in the scriptures is that when we look in the glass and, and we see uh, those uh, imperfections, those things that need to be put in order, we need to take care of it. What it's saying is it's foolish to look in a mirror and to see, say, um, I'll give you an illustration. Um, sometimes uh, when I have lunch, I like to take my tie and flip it around to the back side. Well, I don't carry a mirror around with me, and so after lunch, I just was in a hurry and took off and and it wasn't, uh, it took about an hour or two later before I realized that I was going around with my tie <laughs> flipped over the back of my shoulder. And uh, so had I a mirror, I would have seen uh, that uh, I needed to set things in order. And the scripture is saying here, there are people, though, that see that. And even after seeing it in the mirror, they still leave it that way. Now, we'd say that's a foolish thing. But uh, what is the glass that is being referred to here? The glass is the word of God. We look at the word of God, and it tells us how we are to conduct our lives, how we are to behave, and how we are to glorify God. And when we see things are out of order, we are to set them in order. How foolish it is not to do so when we see that uh, we are not presentable and do nothing about it. Whoso then, verse 25, looketh into the perfect law of liberty. That's our looking glass. That is the word of God. Here, the word of God is called the perfect law. The only perfect law is God's word. Because he is perfect. And it's called the perfect law of liberty because it brings freedom. As we, as our lives by God's spirit, working in the, the word that is preached, that we hear, and God's spirit works in us, that word that we receive, we find that it will change our lives. It will bring freedom. We mentioned the pilgrims coming here for freedom. And we are now enjoying the freedoms of uh, our worship here uh, this evening. And that freedom came about through those who trusted in the word of God. The perfect law that brings liberty. There will be. No liberty where there is not Christianity. Look around and you'll see where Christianity hardly exists. There is a great deal of bondage. And so it is the word of God that brings that freedom that we so much desire. And so in the coming year, let us uh, be looking into the word of God and continue therein, it says in verse 25. And those who hear that word preached, who read that word, are not forgetful hearers, that is, the true believer, but a doer of that word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, we say, have a blessed new year. 
And here's uh, what the scripture is telling us. The key to that blessedness is knowing God's word and by his grace walking according to that word. Now I'd like for us to note in verses 26 and 27 that uh, if we would be a doer of the word, we must, as we were mentioning earlier, bridle the tongue. We must also demonstrate a charitable spirit which comes from the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, a life of purity as well, unspotted, it says, from the world in the latter part of verse 27. If any man among you seem to be religious, bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is, is vain. In other words, a person makes a profession of faith. And uh, their speech betrays them because it is not according to godliness. It is not after godliness. And the scripture says his religion is, is really it's a fake. It's, it's vain. It's empty. But we desire true religion, true Pure religion, Scripture says, and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Now, those who visit orphans, the fatherless, and those who visit widows, they don't get a lot of attention. And a lot of people uh, aren't so inclined to do things where they are not going to get attention. But the person who truly is a servant of God, who loves God, will do those things because they are the loving thing to do. We, are, we ought to take concern for the fatherless. You now here to visit the fatherless, uh, and the widows, uh, it means to look upon their needs. Uh, there are a lot of, across our land, certainly a lot of orphans. Can you imagine uh, having growing, growing, growing up without your uh, natural parents and, and being in different places, people taking care of you? Uh, these kinds of people need our love, and they need to be cared for, certainly spiritually as well, that they receive the gospel. And widows in their afflictions. How often do we uh, take care of those uh, that we know they're, they're widows? We, we don't uh, give them the attention that we should and visit them and care for them as, as we ought. So that would be a thing for us to take note of, to show uh, that our faith is truly true and valid faith based on love. And he says also to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Uh, the world is all around us. Everywhere we go, we are influenced uh, by the world. But we are not to become a part of the world. Not so much as to be even spotted. How often have we had uh, our garments all cleaned and ready, and ready to start the day, and and uh, we get a horrible spot in a in a place that's a very conspicuous area. And so, in the front or on our sleeve or somewhere, we were not able to use that garment. We have to change that garment because it's been spotted. The analogy here is what James is using to show how that we are not to uh, 
take on uh, any of the sins of the world, not even so much as be being spotted. God does bless obedience as we walk according to his word. And so may God bless us in the coming year. Not to say that we are justified by our keeping of the law, certainly not. But we keep God's word because we love him and we show our gratitude for his salvation. So one of the chief signs of one uh, who loves God is that he will manifest a charitable heart, manifest a pure heart, and wants to walk according to the word of God. Peter says in 1 Peter 3.10, He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips. If they speak no guile, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. May God, this coming year, give us grace to be doers of his word. That those things that we have learned, that we may put them into practice. Psalm 1 is a beautiful psalm. Perhaps some of you have memorized that psalm. But it uh, says in verses 1 through 3, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Kind of brings us full circle back to being quick to hear. The godly man, his delight is in God's word, the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. We certainly need to be and could always be more and more into the word. Praying that God would give us grace that we may walk according to that word. The more that we fill our minds with scripture and our that uh, word of God, the more we will find the Holy Spirit using that word to conform us to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. The righteous man, his delight is in the law of God. and He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We all want to see blessing and, and prosperity. But God uh, here says to the man, who is in his word, meditates during day and night. Be like the tree that is that brings forth abundantly because it's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Dear Christian, this evening, let us seek God's grace to do as the psalmist says in Psalm 19, verse 7. To take heed to the law of the Lord, for it is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be de desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. May God be glorified 
in our lives and that we may be blessed from his word as doers of his word and that we may be a blessing to others to the glory of God. Amen. Let us stand together for our closing prayer.